Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. Well, many of you have asked for a new home update, so that's what today is all about. I'm going to catch you up on the whole process. You're going to get to see our selections and why we chose certain things. We're also going to talk about a little twist in the road that happened last weekend. High drama. So to start, uh, since before Christmas, we have been going back and forth with the builder on selections, which has been exciting, but also very, very stressful. So in the community that we're building in, our home will be the first home they've ever built. So that comes with some bumps in the road right there off the bat. It's, first of all, not a floor plan. They're used to building like crazy. Um, they've got a handful of plans in this community and they're used to building them one right after the other. Now, because our plan is different, this is how it works. You build one of their plans um, it comes with more upgrades. You know, they have their standard features and then their upgrade features, and you can upgrade based on different packages they offer. However, because our plan is not one that they are used to building, they give you a standard builder grade package, and anything beyond that is considered a non-standard. So, this is where the stress comes in. We first decided on a plan, Again, it's a plan that has never been built in this community. Secondly, you have to decide if there are any structural changes you want to make. For example, do you want to add a bathroom? Do you want to add a sunroom? Do you want to add uh, more square footage here and there? Add a covered deck or change walls around, things like that. We had three structural changes. One of the structural changes is we decided to go with a side entry garage. We added a powder room off the kitchen, and then we did a covered deck. And those were the three structural changes we made. So that's the good news, that was easy. As far as interior changes go, in the living room, we decided to add two extra windows and we decided to omit any kind of doors um, because you could do a optional study or you could do an optional bedroom. So we have decided to keep it completely open. So as you come in the front door, you've got your living room, your dining room, and again, we added windows to the living room because as I always say, let there be light. Upgrading the front door to glass, so that'll be nice. Again, let there be light. Now normally, the living room and dining room would come with carpet. Why do builders put carpet in the dining room? Anyway, we decided to upgrade those two rooms with hardwood flooring. Also downstairs, we upgraded the family room and the downstairs study to hardwood flooring as well because those would normally be carpeted. So the whole downstairs becomes all hardwood flooring. Now let's talk about the kitchen because that is the elephant in the room. When we decided on this model, the one thing we loved was the openness and airiness of the kitchen. And our goal was to make it into a chef's kitchen. We wanted to do a decorative hood mantle above the range. And we wanted to have a really good blower system so that when my husband does, he likes to cook on cast iron, but it gets very smoky and we set the fire alarms off. His one thing he wanted, he's not gonna get. And why is he not gonna get it? Because of these things. Number one, they were gonna charge us $5,000 for the first modification to the cabinets, and then another $10,000 for the decorative hood, and then another 5,000 for the upgraded blower. What? So now we've decided just go with the basics and we'll do it after the fact. When we close, we'll probably take the cabinet down. It's going to be a cabinet, and then it's gonna be a microwave underneath it. We did, upgrade to a 36 inch cooktop. So um, we'll be able to take that down hopefully rather easily and then install a hood, mantle, and blower unit of our choice at a fraction of the cost. The next upgrade to the kitchen was I had to have my farmhouse sink. I have one here and it is by far my favorite sink I've ever had. I do not like kitchen sinks with a divider, especially when you're always working with big pots and pans or baking sheets, it just gets in the way. So having a nice big open sink 
It's gonna be white and beautiful and pretty. Now, as you know, kitchens sell homes. So you don't wanna skimp on a kitchen if you're having a house built. So uh, again, we saved money because we're going to do the hood and stuff ourselves. But the kitchen cabinets, you want to be really pretty and you want your countertops to be gorgeous because those are selling factors. We upgraded the kitchen cabinets, we upgraded the quartz, we also upgraded the backsplash, upgraded all the hardware, the kitchen faucet, and the pendant lighting. So too, I forgot to mention, when we upgraded the cooktop, it also upgraded uh, our ovens to double wall ovens, which I love. I'm so excited about that. So uh, that will be part of that package. Now we also did an upgrade for all under cabinet lighting because that's kind of a pain to do yourself, especially for as many cabinets as we're gonna have. So we did that as well to the kitchen. Another add-on is this. We're gonna have two decks. What, one standard feature that was awesome is that it comes with a, a porch deck off of the kitchen dining room. And then we also did the covered deck that goes off of the family room. The problem is to get stairs to down below because we're gonna have a walkout basement um, is outrageously expensive right now. So we were thinking, oh my gosh, how are the dogs gonna get outside to do their business? You don't wanna have to go all the way down to the basement to let them out or go out you know, through the front door all the way around to the back. So behind the kitchen, there's a mudroom area. We're going to be having them at a service door, but it's gonna be pretty and black with a glass window. And they're gonna add railing and a porch light outside, a couple set of stairs so the dogs can get down to like a dog run area, which is a plus. Now in the family room, we also did an upgrade and that was doing a box beam ceiling up above. So we're gonna have a two story family room and up above, we're going to have a big box beam ceiling with a big chandelier that drops down, similar to my old house. Now we did ask them if they could paint inside the box beam to kind of accentuate that and they don't wanna do that. So that's not gonna happen. That's something we'll have to do maybe down the line. And then we also upgraded all the lighting. So we're gonna have um, recess lighting probably up there within the box beam ceiling. And then this big, beautiful chandelier. And so we also upgraded all the hardware in the house, like on the kitchen cabinets, the faucets, the all the chandeliers, pendant lighting, foyer lighting, all of that is going matte black. And it's gonna be a little more modern than I would typically go. We upgraded the elevation of our house to the second tiered one. We wanted to go to C or D, but it was, it was getting up there in price. And then also too, you can add a water table with brick or stone. And we opted not to do that, you guys. We decided to put our upgrades on the interior. You can always, always landscape and do landscape lighting to the exterior and make your yard and your home look amazing without adding all that extra expense. And it was it was getting up there, you guys. So we decided, you know what? Let's Let's work on the inside and just make it look beautiful. We can always add to the exterior. We'll say the builder's prices were very reasonable on certain things, but this is, this is one area where the prices were so inflated that we nearly walked away from the deal. Upstairs, we pretty much wanted it all hardwood floors in every room, in every walkway, and here's where they got us. This is this was a huge red flag. So they wanted to charge us 400% more than the downstairs flooring, which has more square footage. Remember, the downstairs is all hardwood floors. They wanted to charge us 400% more upstairs because it was considered a non-standard. What? Excuse me? Another thing that was a little disturbing. So you had choices. You could go with LVP or engineered hardwood floors. LVP is luxury vinyl plank flooring, which is what we have in this house. I will say it is awesome. And 
we debated about getting that, but they had a package that upgrades your carpet, your carpet padding, your quartz, and the flooring, if you go with the engineered hardwood floors, it was like four or $5,000 more than the LVP package. And so we were kind of like, let's just go with engineered hardwood floors because after all, it is real hardwood. And we were like, how can you charge almost the same amount? What happens is because this is a semi-custom builder, um, you can do those, you know, add-ons. What happens is the builder submits them to the estimates department and basically you have to wait for them to get back to you on what it's going to cost to add this on or change this a little bit or add this and change that. And it was taking, quite frankly, way too long because we started this before Christmas and we're just now to the point where as of yesterday, we wrapped it all up. We're getting a little frustrated and a little disappointed because it was taking the fun out of doing this build. Having to wait so long for those estimates to come back, wondering in the back of your mind, am I going to get to build it the way I envision it? Or am I going to have to, you know, take this and this and that and that off to a bare bones house and then do it yourself after the fact? So that waiting process was starting to wear on us. And as I stated, that hardwood floor being 400% more than the flooring downstairs that was a larger square footage area was like a huge red flag to us. Um, so this leads me to last weekend where we had high, high drama. So last Friday, we get the estimates back on the flooring. Again, 400% more. Uh, my husband wasn't happy at all. And I said, you know what? I said, I know I get it. I get it. It's, it's ridiculous. We want what we want and we feel like we're being taken advantage of. And, you know, like I said, they were very fair on other estimates. But the thing is, you want it to be fair to the builder so they can turn a good profit. But it also has to be fair for the prospective buyer. It has to make sense. And when you go over your estimates and you see something like that, it truly sends up a huge red flag. So like I said, I was not happy on Saturday when we were kind of going through all of it and realizing that, oh my gosh, we have to cut a lot out uh, to make the numbers work. I love following real estate. Even when I have a home and I'm happy in it, I'm always looking at real estate. Anyway, I found a house, custom build, absolutely gorgeous. I said, do you think we should go look at this to compare apples and oranges? because this home seems to have all the bells and whistles and granted it's more, but it'd be nice to see what we're up against. And he says, do it, make the call. See if you can get a realtor to go take us and show us. There were three, I think there were three houses. Toured all three homes and we fell in love with this one house, you guys. <gasps> you would have loved it. It was a house with character. It definitely had all the bells and whistles. Yes, it was more than we wanted to spend. We liked it so much, we went out the next day and met with the realtor and the builder. We weren't gonna cancel our contract. We wanted to come to sort of a verbal offer and then if it sounded good, we would proceed forward and go cancel our other contract um, because they hadn't given us all our estimates. They hadn't given us our HOA docs. Um, so we, we could get out of it if we wanted to, obviously we didn't want to, but when we found this house, we're like, why didn't we find this first? Anyway, long story short, um, we couldn't come to an agreement on a price for that house because the builder said basically like if we, we wouldn't have brought a realtor in, then we could have got the price down on the house and it would have been doable, but when we were asking for a certain amount off or a portion of closing costs, plus they have to pay the realtor their realtor fees, um, then the builders add a lot of extra money. So that didn't work, didn't work out. So because we were so far apart on the numbers, we just decided rather than going back and forth, back and forth, we just decided to scrap that and proceed forward with our house and our lot and just be happy. So we came home, we scaled back our list and um, 
that's kind of where we're at. So we're moving forward. They're supposed to break ground in February. We're supposed to close sometime mid-June now. And so all is well. Lessons learned. When you go over your estimates, double, triple, quadruple check the prices and what it costs if you were to do it yourself. Because, I mean, guys, 400% more? No. So back to upgrades upstairs. The only thing we did was we added all hardwood floor to the master bedroom. We upgraded the flooring. We up and the package we got upgraded our quartz in the bathroom and our cabinets, hardware. So the master bathroom will be really nice. We did carpet in the his and her closets to save money. Anything else? And that's all we did upstairs. And then down in the basement, my husband is going to do our shop down there. Um, so we're going to have all of our laser machines and tools and stuff. And so we did some upgrades down there. We added three large windows to bring in light since it's a walkout basement. We want it to feel like home if we ever finish it, you know. So, and windows always brighten and lighten the space. So... The bottom level will be, all be unfinished and my husband will have a shop. I will have a portion of the basement with all my decor shelves so I can plug and play and all is well. So these are the cabinets. They're Timberlake cabinets and the name is Kinsdale Painted Pewter Glaze. And then we decided to go with this beautiful quartz countertop. I love the veining throughout. It's bright white with the gray veining. I love it. And then we're going to go with this backsplash. It's called Finesse, and it's a beautiful glass herringbone pattern, which will be installed on the diagonal. And this is sort of the box beam ceiling that will be going up above with the recessed lighting. Super pretty. And then we're going to go in with a upgraded carpet and carpet pad, and this will go in the bonus room and all the guest bedrooms and the master bedroom walk-in closets. Now, this is the stone we chose for our two-story fireplace. I think it'll be really pretty. Now, we decided to go with the dark engineered hardwood flooring. We had it before and we loved it. It really makes white furniture pop. And it's also going to go really well with that stone we chose for the two-story fireplace. I also forgot to mention that we upgraded a lot of the trim throughout the house. So all the trim will be done in bright white and then all the walls will be done in the color City Loft by Sherwin-Williams. I misplaced the papers that shows all the different chandeliers, but I believe this is going to be in the two-story family room. I believe this may be in another room and there are several other chandeliers too. This will be my farmhouse sink. I know the picture's terrible. This will be the 36 inch cooktop. And I'm pretty sure my bathroom is gonna look something similar to this, but with different fixtures. Oh, and I forgot we upgraded all the doors on the house. So they're more of a craftsman style door. Really, really pretty with modern black sleek handles. All the bathroom fixtures, you know, are not round. They're squared, which I guess is the more modern way to do things so that's really pretty and then we upgraded the staircase and the banister it's craftsman style it will be stained a nice dark color and then we'll have pretty decorative pieces like that and then the staircase risers will all be wood so that'll be really nice I have so much more to share i've done sort of it's not like a mood board but i have gathered inspiration of where I want to steer the house once in it and I can't wait to share that with you so stay tuned and I would love to get your feedback on if you can see that style in that house what you think of it what you would add what you would take away I would love to know all right friends that will wrap up my video for today I hope you guys enjoyed getting a glimpse into what the house is going to look like. Now, before I go, I've had several people ask me if I have any Amazon clothing hauls coming up and oh yes, I do. But I noticed that this video has gotten kind of long, so I don't want to drag this out an hour, but I'll just show you these real quick. And then if you guys want to see them, I'll do a pop-up video for those who want to see it. A pop-up video on like a Tuesday or Thursday or Monday or something like that 
or if you'd like to see it at the end of a video, I can do that too. But I just have to share with you my new lovely finds, these tank tops. I found these on Amazon. They are so cute. Love them. Get them while you can. Um, and a lot of times, some of the off-season items you can get for next to nothing, you guys. So, I don't know. This was several weeks ago. I stocked up on these tank tops for spring and summer. And you can always get those really cute flowy cardigans in all these different colors. So, I'll link these below. Also, pair these with matching sort of cardigans that you can take a look at. But these tank tops are all so cute, you guys. They look great on. If you want to see them on, let me know. But I got a gray one and I got a black and white one. I got a blue and white, a green and white, and white on white. But what I love about these tank tops is the beautiful detailing right here. And because they're v-neck, they elongate you. And then when you pair them with a darling cardigan, add some cute, fun jewelry. So cute, you guys. And if you like any of these tank tops, you can look at the reviews below and you'll see what they look like on people. But I would not share these if I didn't love them. And you can see, I bought quite a few of them because they look super cute on. And you guys know how I love to match colorful shoes with my tops. Don't ask me what I was thinking when I ordered these shoes to go with this. I just thought it was so fun. I was like, I'm gonna wear those. I'm gonna be colorful and I'm gonna be bright for spring. And I could pair this with a really cute flowy white cardigan. I could do it with a blue one if I wanted to. And then my blue shoes. And then pair it with some cute blue or white big earrings. Adorbs. Even got polka dot ones. Huge fan of these slip on shoes. They look like vans, but they're knockoffs. They're inexpensive and you can have fun with your outfits. Buy these in different colors. I even got a yellow tank top with yellow shoes. I got a big package of earrings in all different colors and patterns. So I could wear this yellow tank top with these yellow earrings. Uh, find a cardigan to coordinate because I don't like to show my arms. They're my jeans that I love so much with these yellow shoes. Cute. No, I'm a bargain shopper. I would rather spend my money on decor than clothes or jewelry. So when I do buy clothes and jewelry, I typically don't spend a lot on those things. I try to make them look coordinated and well put together but they're not expensive. And then I found this huge bag of earrings on Amazon, very inexpensive. And look how many pairs of earrings you get. Like, hello, in all different colors, patterns. These are great too, because they're, they're like leather earrings, but they're so lightweight on your ears. I don't know about you, if you're someone that suffers with sinus headaches or migraines, which I do on occasion, um, heavy earrings will just bring one on. So these earrings are super nice because they're lightweight and the price is right, friends. If you're not afraid of color like I am, have fun with those because they're adorable on. I promise you, you will love them. I will see you in the next one. Mwah. Bye, guys.